Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed to our third session. I will now give the floor to the moderator, His Excellency Ambassador Desra Percaya. Thank you very much, MC. A very good afternoon to you all. Let us begin our discussion on the thematic issue of social infrastructure and tourism. Let me, from the very beginning, would like to inform you that the president might be arriving earlier. So for this session, unfortunately, we will only have three minutes uh, time for us here, very unfortunate. But we did, have, we did have earlier division of labor, how to beat the time that we are given. Let me, uh, when I introduce each of the panelists, their CV would appear behind us here. So I think I am not going to read out the CV, their CV, but I can assure you, each of them, they are very much a very impressive individuals with so many achievements. Let me uh, introduce the first panelist, Mr. His Excellency Ramia Abdi Wawa, Minister for Finance and Planning, Zanzibar, Tanzania. Excellency, if I may uh, start with you with the general question, you have very much enough knowledge on the issue. If I could pose a question to you, how could we, Indonesia and African countries, especially your country, strengthen their cooperation, which would include so many areas of infrastructure? Due of time constraint, if you could kindly give us a response as concise as possible, please. Thank you very much. Uh, for the question. <clears throat> uh, first of all, l let me say that uh, it sometimes is a perception, thinking that, you know, we uh, in Africa and you in Indonesia, we, we do produce uh, same commodities. It is true to, to some extent, but also this is, uh, is not going to hinder our cooperation because the most important thing here is to exchange experiences. Uh, to know exactly wh what we have and uh, so that also you you would know what you have so that we can exchange uh, ideas we exchange experiences we come together uh, sometimes we do think that uh, we compete but uh, competition is always there but complementarity is the, is the best thing to do we should uh, co complement on each other on what we, 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 can, we, we can assist to each other, what we, we can do, you know, uh, from, from, uh, to, to each other, that is very important. So Africa, uh, Indonesia, and uh, saying, you know, in, uh, on uh, Zanzibar uh, or Tanzania in general, we have a lot of things, you know, to share. Um, our, our leaders have been here. Uh, we have exchanged, you know, delegations. Uh, from from Tanzania to uh, they have come to to Indonesia and Indonesians also have come to Zanzibar. I had my the pleasure of having the the president here last year. My president was here, and uh, since then, after we have agreed to what we can come come together, what we can commonly find, you know, the the, the best thing, you know, uh, for Africa and for for uh, uh, for Indonesia, that thus we should implement. So implementation uh, is uh, on our side, and we have to, to do it as soon as, we, uh, as possible. Thank you very much, Excellency, for the very substantive and concise response. Let me move to the second panelist, numero de, numero dos. Uh, colleagues, Equatorial Guinea is a Spanish-speaking country. I will try to pose the question in Spanish. Okay. Su Excelencia Ministro Meja, bienvenido a Bali. Sí. Uh, eh, ¿Qué puede hacer Indonesia 
para desarrollar el turismo sostenible en países africanos. Por favor. Muchísimas gracias y agradecerles otra vez, una vez más, por esa invitación. El turismo hoy en día es una forma parte de la industria del desarrollo económico. Indonesia, con su experiencia en el sector turístico, puede ayudar mucho en África para un turismo sostenible, en el que los países africanos, teniendo por las condiciones atmosféricas, podemos aprovechar para mejorar las infraestructuras turísticas en nuestros países. Reunimos las mejores condiciones, tal como lo está también eh, reuniendo Indonesia. Pertenecemos a la misma zona de, del tiempo. Pertama-tama, eh, terima kasih telah mengundang kami ke acara ini. Uh, saat ini uh, industri, uh, pariwisata adalah sebuah uh, industri yang juga bagian dari pembangunan ekonomi dan dengan pengalaman yang dimiliki oleh Indonesia, negara-negara di Afrika dapat uh, belajar banyak dari Indonesia misalnya untuk uh, membangun dan melengkapi infrastruktur yang mendukung uh, pariwisata karena Uh, Indonesia dan Afrika juga uh, memiliki uh, cuaca, iklim, dan uh, musim yang, yang mirip. Con la experiencia que nosotros hemos observado aquí hoy día y los días que estamos aquí en Indonesia, especialmente en Bali, es bastante recomendable que también, si es posible, podemos eh, también organizar en nuestros países, en África, los mismos sistemas de, de turismo, como se está haciendo en los países, especialmente Indonesia y en especial los países asiáticos. Eh, apa yang telah kami lihat selama berkunjung ke Indonesia, khususnya di Bali, eh, banyak hal yang eh, dapat kita pelajari terutama masalah pengelolaan industri pariwisata tidak hanya di di negara-negara Asia pada umumnya dan khususnya di Indonesia. Muchas gracias, Excelencia. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, let us move to the next uh, panelist, His Excellency Derek Klassen, Deputy Minister of Urban and Rural Development Republic of Namibia. Excellency, if uh, we talk about infrastructure, people tend to forget there is also category of social infrastructure, and we are also going to address uh, tourism. If you could shed the light on us how to strengthen cooperation between Indonesia and Africa, African countries, especially with Namibia, and if I could a little bit push on the uh, social infrastructure, which would include health, education, etc. Certainly, not only talking about railway, uh, toll road, uh, port, etc. The floor is yours. Thank you, Excel Thank you Excellency. Uh, yes, I had to start off, you know, by answering you as that uh, Namibia is actually a very large country with a small population, around about 3 million. But it's not that it worries us because we are catering for the 300 million people in SADC. We are saying that Namibia is the gateway, basically, to SADC. And um, I need to mention also that just recently, about a month ago, my president um, uh, omission the new container terminal in Wolfish Bay. It was around about a six million Namibian dollar project, six million rand basically, uh, six billion rand. And um, that that uh, con new container terminal, it was around about 47 hectares of land that was reclaimed from the sea. Also, it makes possibility for big passenger liners that have now the opportunity to come and berth next to this uh, container terminal. Uh, availability is made for that and with that passenger line has come it means a lot for tourism for the country especially local economic development will boom also when uh, these passengers are coming or foreigners are coming to our country for tourism 
also I need to stress that we in, in Namibia, we also make to our, some of our landlocked neighboring countries land available to have their own dry ports inside in the harbor town of Walfish Bay. We, we have very good road infrastructure in Namibia as such for tourism and the gravel roads that consist is also in a very good, in a, in a very good uh, state. So tourism plays a very big role in the country, especially where our GDP is concerned. It contributes to our GDP. I need to, I need to stress that um, land plays a, ownership of land plays a very big role in our country. And the outcry is much for land for the people. As we know, the fight at the end of the day was for land. The president called a land conference, our second land conference, whereby most parties that have um, a stake in this, they uh, visited, I not visited, they attended this land conference. And so one of the resolutions of this land conference was, for example, the informal settlements and housing that became national, it was national emergencies for us. And that's why we are really concentrating a lot on the, on the upgrading of our informal settlements. It's a national crisis. Also in the same vein, I need to mention and this is where I believe that we and Indonesia can work together uh, very closely. Um, I, I watch the presentations of VK and so on, you know, where housing is concerned. Housing is really a crisis for us and we really need, we nearly really need to cooperate and work mm. together to find solutions in that, uh, in, the, in that aspects. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Thank you very much, Excellency, for the very comprehensive uh, response. Let us now move on to the next uh, panelist, Her Excellency Professor Dr. Manal Awad Mikhail, Governor of Damieta, Egypt. Alan Wasalan. Um, Governor, if I could ask you, and you could kindly uh, shed the light on us, how could Indonesia could strengthen our, co our cooperation with your governorate uh, and in what areas do you think that we can strengthen uh, this kind of uh, cooperation? تشتهر محافظة دمياط بصناعة الأساس والمنتجات الخشبية طبعا هو الأفضل أن احنا نعمل اتفاقية ما بين محافظة دمياط وما بين مدينة جبارة في اندونيسيا التي تشتهر بصناعة الأساس هي أيضا لتبادل الخبرات والثقافة ما بين جبارة وما بين دمياط وخصوصا أن دمياط دلوقتي بقى فيها مدينة متكاملة كيان اقتصادي متكامل لصناعة الأساس تسمى مدينة دمياط الأساس كمان دمياط بتشتهر بصيد الأسماك والمزارع السمكية دمياط تعتبر تلت أسطول الصيد في جمهورية مصر العربية في دمياط وإندونيسيا تشتهر كمان بصيد الأسماك فممكن برضو يكون في تعاون ما بين دمياط وما بين إندونيسيا في الصيد في المنت... المراكب وصناعة ال... والصناعات الخاصة بصيد الأسماك شكرا Thank you, thank you very thank much you. Uh, Governor, very, very clear uh, Let us now move to the next uh, panelist Mr. Ferry Sutikno CEO Dexa Group. But Ferry, if I could pose a question, uh, because I do understand that Dexa has been uh, very active in the continent in Africa, can you share with us lessons learned, opportunities and challenges, and what is your plan? What is Dexa's plan for the next future? Thank you very much. 
ambassador uh, Desra Percaya. Uh, Dexa Medica is a 50 years old company in Indonesia specializing in generics, pharmaceuticals, tablets, injectable, and so on. And we are also uh, having now some oncology products for cancer patients. And uh, coming to your question, I think the last five years, Indonesian pharmaceutical industries has made a major leap in uh, our progress. So we can also get certification from the FDAs or the or regulatories from many regulated markets and also developing markets. So between Indonesia and Africa, we have a lot of similarities. And in this case, uh, we've been exporting to Nigeria, for example, for the last 20 years. And I believe that in this time, the key word is collaboration. So I think we don't have to reinvent the wheel uh, because I believe the society and the industry in these African countries will also soon moving into their own self-reliance by building their own manufacturing plants on pharma. And in that case, then Indonesian pharmaceutical companies can also uh, collaborate and have an exchange of our uh, competencies with our partners in uh, African countries. So that's why uh, DEXA is now also active uh, to open up different markets in Eastern Africa, in Tanzania, in Ethiopia, and so on, and also in the Western uh, Africa after Nigeria, and so on. So we have a lot of experience now. We're exporting to UK, to Holland, or to Poland, and so on. And we have many products, not only generics, but also herbals that we research from Indonesian uh, base. So that's why I would like really to uh, see in the next uh, one or three years that will be more collaborative initiative taking place between Indonesian pharma companies with uh, any of the uh, pharma companies in different African countries. Thank you, Pa. Thank you very much, Pa Ferry. <laughs> Mr. Abdul Bar M. Mansur, CEO of ITDC, Indonesia Tourism Development Corporation. What can you learn and what can you offer to our colleagues, our brother and sister from Africa countries? Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, the easiest way to uh, introduce our company is that uh, where we are standing right now, where you are staying, the hotels. Um, if you look outside, if you look at the street, if you look at the landscape, if you look at the golf course, that is what we do. We develop uh, destinations. And where we are right now, we have been developing for the last 40 years. We have 5,600 rooms, 20 hotels and villas, a golf course, a international hospital, a mall, and all the facilities to make a destination. So we are creating destinations. And right now we are expanding to Lombok, the next island in Bali, uh, four times the size, about 1,200 hectares, and also six other locations throughout Indonesia. So where we stand right now, uh, the occupancy rate is 75%, and we get 1.2 million uh, visitors or guests every year, which is 8% of all the incoming tourism in Indonesia. And uh, right now, we are expanding to other uh, areas, but more importantly uh, for Africa, we are looking into expanding our market to provide or to design or to make possible the creation of a destination such as the Nusa Dua. And uh, to that extent, we have signed an MOU with the government of Gabon last year uh, when they uh, provide the land for us and then they will provide the connectivity and we can help them to master plan, to plan, to uh, bring the investors and also we will bring our partners from the state-owned company like Wika to build also with the Indonesian Exim Bank as the financial backer so that we come with a full package to develop a destination in Africa. And right now we are in the process of uh, furthering our cooperation with the Republic of Gabon who has uh, appointed uh, land that is 1,000 hectare next to the capital of Libreville. And we've also spoken with uh, His Excellency, the president of uh, Zanzibar, who is also looking into uh, making another destination similar to the Nusa Dua in Zanzibar. And we've also spoken to the government of Brunei and also Malaysia. So we're looking to expand in Africa. I think the tourism market in Africa is very promising and the climate is, same, is similar to Indonesia in some beautiful beaches, especially in Gabon. Yeah, so we can work together to make a destination such as where we are right now. Thank you very much.
Very good. Thank you very much, Bapak Abdul Bar. Next, uh, Mr. Juliman, acting, acting CEO Biopharma. I do understand that Biopharma has been very active in nearly all of the African countries. If you could kindly share with us, Bapa, what is the key success of your uh, participation, your contribution, and also your active engagement with Africa? What lesson learned that you can share with us, and what is your plan? Thank you, Ambassador. So, Biopharma uh, has a long experience in vaccine production. Uh, our company established in 1890, so we have more than 120 years in producing vaccine and antisera. Uh, and have more than 2 billion doses production capacity annually. And so far we have supplied to more than 140 countries and all also to all African countries, mostly through UNICEF. So uh, uh, the key success factor is uh, we have to have a, a long strat uh, strategy uh, in uh, developing our, uh, research and development and also production capacity and should have a strong commitment on, on both, uh, both sides. And then, uh, of course, uh, we need to have a very good uh, human resources to be able to produce the products and one important thing is uh, the country have to have a very functional uh, national regulatory authorities and last one is uh, we have to have a very good network both internationally or locally and uh, what we could offer for our colleagues from Africa is to to be self-reliant in vaccine production we have uh, this kind of uh, collaboration on downstream process. Uh, in the short term, we can supply the product either in the final product or naked files. So the company or the country can do the packaging and, form, uh, and then labeling and packaging. In the medium term, we could, uh, we could offer the, what we call it ready to fill product when the country has already have the filling of facility and in the long term we can supply the active ingredient or the ballot to be formulated to be filling uh, in the facility so we can offer the transfer technology and that process thank you thank you very much uh, Pak Juliman uh, the last on our uh, panel uh, Bapak Rosano Sutanto Vice President PT Indes Indeso RM R Aroma, aroma, flavor, ingredients, fragrance, food. Can you share with us what this is all about? And what can you offer to Africa? And what can you bring from Africa to Indonesia? Thank you, Ambassador Desra Pachaya. So Indeso is a 51 years old company and we are always involved in the business of uh, making ingredients, active ingredients for the business of flavors and fragrances. And we see a lot of opportunity in Africa, uh, particularly as I mentioned the country is uh, Tanzania because a lot of uh, similarity in, in terms of the biodiversity and the plants between Tanzania and Indonesia. And in this particular, I'm, I'm talking about uh, clove leaf oil because uh, we believe this uh, is a huge uh, plantation in, in Zanzibar and we can make and we can help uh, develop uh, the people in Tanzania, especially in, Tan in Zanzibar, uh, to make more efficient way uh, the clove leaf oil. And then from clove leaf oil, we can make further down the derivatives, the eugenol, iso eugenol, and so on. And all this can be used also in the pharmaceutical, but mainly in the flavor and fragrance application. And of course, it's our challenge and our aim uh, to develop and to put uh, the resources so that uh, we can gain and we can collaborate more and more uh, with uh, African countries then. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bapak Sutanto. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, very unfortunate 
I won't be able to take a question from you, but it is we are going to do injustice if we don't give them a round of applause for their presentation. Three points that I would like to conclude. Networking is very important. We can learn from each other, collaboration, mutual benefit, and certainly this is the issue, and this is the further step that we need to take to the future. Again, on behalf of the Government of Republic Indonesia, I would like to thank you very much for taking the time and also for your readiness to be the panelists. Muchas gracias, Su Excelencia. Thank you.